being comfortable with failing will help you out a lot. Make the hard phone call. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the FYI podcast, finding your inspiration, where we find our inspiration and we follow it. Today, we got an incredible guest. I love this guy. Worked with this guy many times. This is Jeremy Luke. What up? What up? Jeremy Luke. <laughs> Jeremy Luke's an incredible actor. Look him up. Google him. Uh, he's he's worked with the best from Martin Scorsese to Clint Eastwood. He's done all kinds of things in Hollywood, but he's a lot more than just an actor, and that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about where Jeremy comes from, how he found his passion, and what it took for him to pursue it. Jeremy, talk to us, man. Where are you from? Uh, I am from Staten Island, New York. Um, I've been in Los Angeles. I left I left Staten Island when I was 22, mm -hmm. and I moved out to Los Angeles, and I've been in L.A. now for the past 23 years, so I guess... That kind of makes me an Angelino now, right? Right, right. <laughs> so that's why. Official. Yeah, I'm, I'm official. I'm here. So I've been uh, I've been out here for 23 years. I can't even believe it. Like more than half my life now. Wow. Yeah. Well, that must have been a culture shock. Serious. It's a, a scary. The, the third day I burst out in tears. I was like, oh, my cousin, I just burst out in tears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it was like one of those things where I just knew. I knew because I had such a light. Growing up in New York on Staten Island, I, I like made a life for myself. You know, I used to promote nightclubs. I I was earning a lot of money at an early age, and um, I just knew that part of me was yeah. gone. You know, I was like, it's I'm not going back there, and it was just kind of grieving my old who I who I was. You know, so you're in Staten Island, you're promoting clubs. When did you find acting? What what made you say I want to go to L.A. and and I wanted what happened was I was uh well how I got into acting was I was I was I was, I was promoting these nightclubs and I was like really stressed out because it was always like a timeline and it was there was a lot of pressure involved uh and I I, I just I I didn't know what to do like you know I was out of high school and I just I, I didn't have anything to do you know and I didn't have a I didn't have an outlet and um I just took it. I was very, I was always interested in acting. I, I took an acting class when I was 10 and there were all these girls in the class and they were all like 12 and it was like a singing and dancing class and I was 10. So the, the first day I was like, during lunch, I was like, oh God, I feel so small, right? I mean, well, I'm, I'm short too. So everybody was like, forget it. So I was just like, I was a, I was a boy with like, you know, preteen girls. And I was like, I'm not doing this. So I always was, I was always interested in it. And then I was like really stressed out. I used it as an outlet. I just started doing, going to class and taking classes, et cetera. And then um, I had a friend at the time, Jerry Ferrara, Turtle from Entourage. Yeah, we used to be, we used to be very close when we were younger. We started acting okay. together in college. And he was like, yo, I'm going to L. We were real close. He's like, I'm going to LA. Da da da, and I was like, he's like, you should come, and this and that, and I was like, man, you know, like, and then at that time, I was like, I need to get out of the nightlife, I, and I, I can't like be an actor in New York, I can't like, I can't be broke we won't in New focus. York, yeah. I'm not focused, and my ego is too big to be a broke actor in New York. Um, so I was like, I'm just gonna move to Los Angeles, and uh, and and I did it. Now, was Jerry already doing Entourage at that no, point? No, 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 no. Okay, this so that came later. Before, yes. Wow. Four or five years before Entourage. Okay. And he, has, he wasn't doing. Okay, so you still were both grinding. I mean, you didn't. Yeah. Not like yeah. you saw him go boom. No, 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 no. no. We were both. No, we okay. were just both like, you know, we were both like, you know. It was wow. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so you come out here. Uh, I, You know, like, you, this podcast isn't really about Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But but uh, you know it's 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 your body of work. But I want to get into like uh, how did you um, you found what you wanted to do? You came, but how did you make that happen? Sustain? What did you do as far as work? How did you put you know? Oh, like what the pay the bills? Uh, yeah, and I, I you know I did everything from I worked with autistic kids for five years. Oh wow! Uh, you didn't? I don't think you did. I didn't. I, 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 most people don't. I worked for autistic kids for five years. Um, I worked for promotions, like those promotional places, you know, driving, seg I drive the Segway around like Venice Beach with these big 
four business gum pouches and just <laughs> give out 3,000 pieces of gum in a half hour. I also worked for Marlboro cigarettes. I was one of those people in the, yeah, I was one of those people in the clubs that was swiping. Oh. Uh, yeah. People so were, wait a minute, you'd walk around. And yeah, I'd be like, give me a license. <laughs> I'd be like, give me a license. And then I would, you know, I would, I would swipe the license. And I, I mean, at the time I smoked, I didn't have a problem with it. But, you know, people were angry at me. And all. So when someone died from lung cancer, I'd be like, man, I'm just trying to put my kid through nursery school right now. Wow. So not your stories, you know. Uh, I did uh, insurance. I worked for uh, used used bar to car, car warranty insurance. I was a bartender at one point with Liam at the hotel. He got me a job. Wow. Uh, what else did I do? I did I did like a bunch of stuff. At one time, I remember I had like six jobs. Um, and then I delivered food in the morning for a long time. Uh, then I did my showcase, which was like, thank God, because that helped me out a lot. Which I want to talk about. That That to me was, yeah. um, I, I, I'm i always like, I got into the business too late, and why couldn't I have thought of that idea? That's a, uh -oh. it's a good, because not only do you help people, and it's in truly, I that's how we everyone, met. everyone, that's how we, yeah, yeah, that's how we met. I send every new actor I thank need, you. I send them to your showcase because... Yeah. I mean, that's one of those like side hustles to me yeah. that's like so beneficial because you're doing a good thing and it's yeah. a truthful thing and you're not ripping people off. Yeah. And I'm assuming you make, you know, you're able to. Yeah, I do. Okay. I mean, I'm not, you know, I make money. Um, Let's talk about that. Tell 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 people what that is. So I have a, a, a showcase that I've been doing. The showcase is like, you know, in Hollywood, they have these showcases for actors trying to get representation and I used to do these these showcases myself actually the first one that I did Jerry was in like six months before me it was this big I'm not going to mention the name but it was yeah. a big showcase in in New York and they have one in New York and they have one in Los Angeles it's probably five thousand dollars wow yeah so I was doing those to get representation to meet people to get in the mix which was worth it at the time to be honest because my, I still have friends now that I met 23 years ago. Um, and then what happened was I was doing these showcases and they were very, uh, they just seemed like they were really expensive, like really expensive. And I would like have to work like, you know, three three weeks to like pay for it. It was like $700 for one night. And, um, uh, I, you know, I just saw what was happening with people getting ripped off. And I was like, maybe I could do this, do something like, actually, it was Labor Day and I was just broke, you know. And I was like, maybe I could do something like this and incorporate the nightclub stuff with that. So so I did. I started, uh, I started my showcase. I called my friend who had a theater and I was like, hey, it was a very hard phone call to make. You know, it was one of the most important phone calls in my life. I was like, because I thought of the idea. I was like, hey, can I rent your theater for a night? Um, he's like, yeah, sure. Why? What's up? I was like, I think we're going to do a showcase. And then I went click. And then I, I got two agents, my two agents. Um, I think I got a manager that night. And that was my first showcase. I called like a bunch of my friends. And then, you know, they followed up with the reps afterwards and emailed them and stuff. And like we asked them for meetings. And a bunch of people got meetings. Um, Joey Russo. That wow. got signed. He was my. Is that how you met Joey? Oh, I knew Joey before that. Joey okay. was like my. Just so you guys know, Joey's like my comedic partner in crime that we've done. Tremendous actor as well. Joey Russo does great work. Yeah, have you seen the offer? Or he played uh, Joe Gallo in that. I was working for Marlboro. I was actually working for Marlboro, and I think he was he was working for O'Brien's. He used to work the door at O'Brien. Oh, okay. So I was. Out, I didn't know him well, so I was outside signing people up for cigarettes. And he was working the door, so we would just kind of chit chat. Uh -huh. And then, like at some point, we just he he wound up doing the showcase, and we kind of hit it off and became friends. Just so you know, before I roll past, what a showcase is to be specific is as an actor in Hollywood, you got to get an agent and a manager, right? That's how you get into real like to better auditions and book jobs. You have an agent, you have a man manager to help kind of mold your career, get your head shot, to figure out what type you are, and then you have an agent who gets you the audition. So what these showcases are is I'm an actor. I don't have an agent manager. I'm new to Hollywood, and it's very difficult to get an agent and manager, and it's difficult to join SAG. These are like the entry things, like accomplishments. So you go to a showcase like Jeremy's, you pay X amount of dollars. These are very affordable. I did it myself. That's how I got my first agent. Um, 
they get your headshots, you go up on stage and you do a monologue, or you could do a scene with a partner, but you do a monologue. And if the agents are interested, they'll contact you and they sign you and and that's how you get going. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it's, it's more of an educational thing, too. Like, we do Q&As with that. Yeah, it's now now it's evolved. A, well, now it's evolved. In the beginning, there wasn't all these these things that I was doing. But now, uh, this was back in, like, 2009. But now it's like, I, you know, I yeah. bring in, um, I sometimes I bring in actors, working actors, directors. You came in. Yeah, I came in. And spoke I teach a seminar about them, try to, like, get them the shortcut, try to give them the shortcuts of all the ways that I, you know, this way they don't. Do that also, and then I do a Q and A with the reps. So it's like it's it's an educational thing too. So I make sure everybody just leaves with something really good. You yeah, know, just getting some wisdom or whatever it is, inspiration or meeting people, friends. That's you know that's we'll put a we'll put like the info at the end of that. So for yeah. anybody out there that's that's interested in this and 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 Jeremy's uh, info, I want to lead into. Um, the amazing project that, that you and Joey created, uh, originally was a turbo and Joey, yeah. which turned into small shots. Yeah. And, um, I, I'd love you to just quickly talk about it and then tell the story about how Scorsese himself and De Niro got to see your guys' uh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, I'll just kind of start at this. This was, you know, since this is about like inspiration and doing things, it was one of the toughest phone calls I've ever made to call my friend Leith and say, hey, Leaf, can you write something for me and my friend Joey? For Joey. He knew Joey. And he said, yes. Hung up the phone. And I was like, okay, well, he he's going to write a five-minute thing for me and Joey. Then we made our first video in the living room. Right. And that's how we sparked it off. And then... Um, Shot it on Blackberries, if I remember. First one was... Well, the first one before that, we, we weren't doing scripted yet. We were doing like... You know, knuckleheads walking around. Like I shot the first one was him eating blackberries, and I remember like it was eating blackberries, eating meatballs on the blackberry. And I remember my mom was visiting at the time we were roommates, and my mom was like walking up the stairs, and he's like eating meatballs, and it was like <laughs> that was it. And we put it on Facebook, and he said a couple of things, and it, and that was it. And like so, it grows from that. Okay, it grows from that to yeah. a scripted. Yeah, we got Justin and Alev got involved. How many years in between? Um, from the time we started was 2010, and then we st we shot small shots. Turbo and Joey went into small shots. It, it evolved into the show Small Shots, which was essentially Turbo and Joey. Um, took six years, six and that years. was on Netflix for a couple of years too. So this show is a, yeah, this show went to Netflix. It was incredible. Um, they do a, uh, a reenactment of the movie Casino. It's this epic scene where um, uh, uh, Jeremy's doing the De Niro character and Joey's doing the uh, Joe Pesci character when they're in the desert. And when I tell you, Anybody out there right now, go to YouTube. Is it on YouTube? Can they find that? I clip Turbo and Joey is on YouTube. Yeah, it's on my Instagram. I put it on my Instagram. You'll watch that clip if you're a casino fan. Yeah. Flawless. I've watched it about 10,000 times yeah. to find a mistake. Yeah. Flawless. It was so good that it got to Scorsese by, um, by I think, a casting director. Cast right? director, yeah. Uh, she showed this clip to Scorsese. Scorsese calls over De Niro shows it to De Niro, they, they share a laugh. Next thing you know, these guys are cast in the movie The Irishman, alongside Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Bobby Cannavale, some of the Harvey Keitel, the greatest New York actors that all of us dream to work with. So I remember when that happened for you, and I was like, so excited. Yeah, man. it was one of those dream come, tr come true moments. You know, we never we never expected it. Well, you know, when we when we set out making Turbo and Joey, it was only because we were so desperate to do something. I mean, we neither of us had agents at the time. Like it was really, I mean, I was having a really tough time. Like Joey had like just booked a guest star or something like that on Bones, but I was having a real tough time. I was like dead in the water, and it was like at least we're having fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like at least we're having a good time. We're being creative. It would be in ourselves. And I guess we're entertaining for our friends on Facebook because <laughs> they seem to really like it. Yeah. And then it grew into something else. And I, I did not expect any of the the accolades that came with it were all extra. Like, wow. It was, it was, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I feel like that's when the most amazing things happen for us out there, too. I mean, it's kind of like this podcast. You know, I had no idea 
that I'd ever be doing this. And uh, this podcast has truly been so inspirational in my life. Yeah. And actually, um, it came about because of uh, Replica, because of the film. And yeah. uh, somebody, you know, one of, one of the executive producers on this, you know, had saw Replica and then called the other executive producer. And, and, and they believed in me and they flew me out to Utah. Next thing I know, I'm pitching an idea. And look, we're, we're here today. I'm traveling around the country, meeting amazing people, some friends, some new people. I'm being inspired every day. And uh, my point to that is for anyone out there, it's, uh, you know, just, just keep doing something, right? Just do, have fun. The last guest that was on, had talked about having fun in life and just making life fun. And we're, we're only here for so long. And it leads into what you just said. You and Joey were just having fun and entertaining. And it ends up all the way at the top of the list with yeah. Arvin Scorsese, bro. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. And having the courage also to do the things that, you know, even with us, with the replica, we did the play replica. That's how this, you know, he, right. I saw the play about five or six years before. And he did it with um with what Spencer yeah and it was great the play was awesome and I, I at the time I wanted to do something and I was like and I was like made a phone call Paul let's meet and talk about replica you sure yeah okay we'll see you at coffee at You're Gelson's right. and we You're had right. that meeting at Gelson's and we were like okay let's do it and we kind of mapped out a whole plan. Right then and there. Yeah, you're right. You know what? I don't share that enough, Jeremy. Yeah. Actually, you're 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 spot on, man. Yeah. I, I'll never forget that phone call. Yeah, I wrote Replica, part of my theater company. Jeremy came out to see the production. Great. The theater. And uh, actually, that's on YouTube, like interviewing the audience. And you're like right there. You're, you're with some girl. And you're like, this this play was great. One of the best play. And you're right. I remember you call me. I, it was like a year or something after that. It was time because I had... I wasn't even working on Replica, and he's like, let's, you know, let's let's do a play. We met at Gelson's, yeah. and next thing you know, I think Ryan came out, and he's like, have you thought yeah. about doing a screenplay? I'm like, I kind of, yeah. next thing you know, I wrote a screenplay. So it's- It was it's like some momentum that events. happens. Yeah, it was just like this momentum that happens. Like, you know, you don't know, you know, having a good time and doing things for the sake of doing it and not, you're really good, you know, you're really good- um, example of that of not like waiting around for somebody to say hey i i'm gonna cast you in a play i'll go make my own theater company or <laughs> you know hey i want to cast you in a movie go to direct a movie like just go direct my own movie i mean right you know that's there's something to be said about that Thank you know you. and we live in that world now you know that that that's the thing that i see with young actors if anybody's watching like a lot of them are like trying to get it right you know or afraid to fail yeah. Being comfortable with failing will help you out a lot in yeah. this business. You know, being comfortable. I obviously you, you strive and stuff, but being comfortable with failing will alleviate a lot of the shit that's on your shoulders, you know? Agreed, agreed. And yeah. how do you avoid hitting the snooze button in life? What keeps you going, not snoozing out? I think I might just be like fear. <laughs> I'll be completely honest. Like a lot of it is fear, you yeah. know. Um, a lot of it is like I, I've never been like a person that's content, you know. And I, I don't think any artist is content, you know. I don't think the nine to five thing, just you know, getting a job and a pension and all that kind of thing. It, it just was never was never my thing. Like I'm I, I'm I'm a deeper, create more creative person than that. Not nothing wrong with nine to five because obviously people do what they have to do and some people are good with that but that has never been my thing like i i need to like do what i do and just be in the mix and you know it, there's also fear you know yeah. i'm not gonna lie like there's fear of being the broke actor that i was right you know i i, I was struggling for a really long time so i have a lot i'm like you know it's like one of those those you know like our grandparents were born in the great depression and putting money in the cookie jar and that kind of stuff. You know what I, mean? but I feel like I have some of that from being like, you know, just being broke for a while. So there's some of that involved, but you know, I do like to keep it moving and I like to be active and it's good for me by my, that keeps my head out of the gutter and you know? Yeah. I think it's important to note too on that, um, that, um, if you do choose to not go the path of the nine to five and the pension and, uh, you have to be a hustler, which you are. You yeah. have to think. And I mean a hustler in a good way, not yeah. a, a hustler ripping people. Right. I mean, 
you have to have, like you have done, yeah. think outside the body. You mentioned you were working six jobs. You were doing the figure out the showcase. Um, I think that's important for the audience always to hear that um, because a lot of uh, a lot of times we hear like, yeah, I don't want to work a nine to five either. I want to be creative. But yeah. believe me, it's the harder path. I agree. It's the path I have to be on because I'm a creative, but you still have bills to pay. There still has to be dental taken care of, and there's still things that have to be taken care of, I think, right? So so just knowing that you have to have the drive, and if you do have the drive and you think outside the box, you know, chase it. Go for it. Um, uh, I also want to talk real quick on um, uh, your sober. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I am as well. Congrats on that. Um, uh, so... You you did you you did your time in the party years. How's it been? Uh, how has being sober affected your momentum? I have a really weird like I, I got a lot of success when I was drinking. Okay, you know, so it's it's a little bit backwards from the. I had a lot of success when I was drinking. That backfired on me. No, no, no. I'm just being. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. But life was great. I don't know. I loved them. But at the same time, I was like, I, I just got to a point where it was just exhaustion all the time. And I yeah. don't know if I'd be alive. I used to drink a lot, like a lot. And I, if I, it went from like a couple of days a week, two, three days a week to like seven. Wow. Um, I don't know if I'd be alive right now. I, I think I'd probably, or I would die young, you know, knock on what I don't. But I, I think I would have been. I, I think I would have been further along, like maybe cirrhosis or you know, medical problems, definitely. And I, I don't think I could function. Like, I don't think I was able to function too much longer the way that I was going. So things are, you know, things are, they're better. They're a lot better, to be honest. Yeah. You know, I'm clear. I don't, I, I'm not a slave to it. And you're able to, uh, I mean, you've accomplished so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. investing, you've got. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't have, and you yeah, wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been able to pull off the stuff that I had, you know, I wouldn't be focused. I wouldn't be up in the morning. I wouldn't be able to, I got dogs now. I wouldn't be able to take care of my dogs or, you know, there's just a lot that I probably would be dead. Yeah. Yeah. Or close to it. You, one last thing I want to throw out. I noticed you navigate yourself well through, through this town. Um, you always do a good job. And I admire that of keeping friends around you. Keeping a community. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that about you. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're really good at that. People like you. You know, you bring people around. I know you've invited me at times to your home. And, and, and yeah. Um, how do you find, um, do you ever find that difficult in this town? To yes. Yes. Um, I like to go into things with an open heart. And, you know, yes, I've been guarded over the last, probably, you know, over the last 12 years, I've been more guarded with people. But, you know, when somebody, when, you know, in life, when somebody does something bad to you, um, it'll, it'll eat me up. But I also have to be able to go into the next friendship or relationship and not take that out on. It's like, you know, you're some kind of abusive relationship and then you're dating somebody and then you're abusive to them too, because yeah. you got abused, which I, I, I was never into that. I was like, always try to come come from a place of having an open heart, you know? And I, I, I did a lot of, you know, thank God, like I started doing um, self-help stuff when I was yeah. young, when I was like 19, 20. Well, you know, I went to Tony Robbins seminar when I was 21 and that's really what sparked me into, right. um, and I listened to Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, all these guys. And I would just kind of feed myself with that. And you know, I realize, you know, Zig Ziglar's got a, a great quote that I, that I've run with, you know, people like, how do you, you know, you can get anything you want if you help other people get what they want. Mm. You know what I mean? And I, I, in the beginning, I didn't really have a friend that would help me and guide me along or, you know, make a phone call for me or on my behalf, you know, and I always wanted, I always wanted that. And I never really had that in town for a while. And then after a while, I met some really good people. You're very generous in, in spreading the word or letting people yeah. know if there's an opportunity, mm -hmm. which is very rare. In the and it town. comes back to you, too. Like, right. Fortunately for me, it's come back to me. Like, you know, you help people out, it comes back. You're a nice person, it comes back. You know who called me to the... Um, Jamal Hodge. Oh, yeah, Jamal Hodge. Yeah, yeah Jamal Hodge. Hodge. Yeah, yeah. He, but he, I mean, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Like, he called me... 
And I vaguely remember he's a big guy, right? Yeah, yeah, guy. yeah. He was he at was the a, Chelsea Film Festival. Yeah, but he was also a rep. He was also he was also a replica when the play on the stage, right? He came yes. backstage one day with Gio. With Gio, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I remember him. Anyway, he called me to you know do a project, new project in New York with him, and I was like, Yeah, yeah man, man, send me stuff, you know. So it's you know it's one of those things I think like. You know, just being of service, which I've learned also in, in, I've done it before. Before I was of service too, but like you do it even more in recovery. You know? Yeah. I think it's important for everybody not to, I'm not saying be something you're not, because yeah. I don't think you're not, you're you. But I think that being the person that people want to work with and be around and always brings to the table, not just takes from the table, yeah. is so important. You're that guy. Yeah. You constantly bring to the table. Yeah. Right. So, and, and, and you're fun to be around it, and and you're loving. So what I'm saying is that's important. And I I just want to throw that out for the audience that somebody sitting at home, we don't always have to be the uh you know it's my way or the highway type of person. It's very important to be collaborative. I think in any business. I no, I agree. Know. Yeah, yeah, I okay. agree. Like just yeah, I I think so. Like I mean, in what we're Trying to control everything in what we do is, it's a bad, it's bad. You know yeah. what I mean? Like being collaborative and taking suggestions and being open. I think that's, for me, that's worked, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. And I strive to do that better myself in every aspect. Well, I mean, when you directed, it was great. Like you were really like, I, I mean, I, you know, I told uh, somebody this recently, like that was asking about you as a director. I was like, you great because it's just. You know, collaborating. Yeah, this idea sounds good. And okay, yeah, let's like move. With, like, you know, let's move with that. And like, let's do something. Like, you yeah. have your ideas, but you were also like malleable to other suggestions and things Absolutely. coming all out. And like, you know, really ready to move on the fly if we had to change things or you know, and keeping you cool of not to lose. Right, right. Who's you know. Yeah, no, I love it. I love being in that director's chair. Uh, and I think working with actors, it's so important. I think from being an actor first and then getting in the direct, it's important because I trust my... It, first of all, if I cast you, I trust you. I hate especially yeah. in a lead position. But really, I yeah. feel like I, every position I cast in my projects, I, I they have to be able to do it. But especially like you're playing, mm. the lead, you're, you're driving the ship. Um, so if I cast someone... Why would I not take their suggestion? I feel like, Paul, I'm feeling, yeah. you know, I'm like, let's bet, let's go. What's going on now? And, and where do you see yourself going? And if you have any projects to plug, plug them. Because, you know, yeah. people to see what you're doing. Uh, I think by the time this comes out, it'll probably be out. But there's a movie that I did. It was formerly called The Gemini Lounge. Now it's called Inside Man. And um, Emil Hirsch is the lead. I, I'm one of the, how, it's about, you know, it's about these really bad um, mafia guys, uh, Roy DeMeo and those crew, which yeah. you played actually, you played yeah, it. incredible, um, but really bad, bad piano. Yeah. And, um, so Emil's in it and, uh, Lucy Hale was on Pretty Little Liars and, uh, Jake Cannavale, Bobby Cannavale's son. Yeah. And, uh, yours truly and James Russo. And that's coming out. Do you mean I think that's going to be like on all platforms. And then I did this other film with Billy Gardell called The Vortex. I think that will be out. I don't know when that's coming out. And then I did this other film called Replica. Yeah, it's coming out. Replica's coming. Uh, uh, directed by Paul Tully and Mickey Rourke. Yeah, yeah. Well, starring Mickey Rourke. Uh, not directed by Mickey Rourke. Mickey, you're not Dean Kirk. No, I'm just kidding. Mickey, how great was he, man? Yeah, he was He was. Uh, he was an interesting fellow. <laughs> he was great. Yeah. <laughs> um... I like how, uh, listen, Gemini Lounge, Inside, Inside it's Man. Head inside Man. Uh, cool, man. Jeremy. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. You have any message for anybody out there that's sitting at home, whether they want to be an actor or not, you know, uh, uh, you have anything you want to tell them or maybe some young person that's watching this going, I could do that. Make, I could make the phone call. Make uh, the hard phone call. I like it. I like make it. the hard phone call. I like, I'm telling myself that too right now because you bring back things for me that I'm like, oh, well, I forgot about that. I need to make those phone calls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to close this out, guys. This has been another incredible interview with Jeremy Luke. Things I took from this interview, make the phone call. But more importantly, things I took is, uh, you know, you have to have to have hustle. 
you have to work. You have to do whatever it takes to get to where you're trying to go. I heard this man talk about coming out here to L.A. at 22 years old, working six different jobs at a time, you know, uh, giving out cigarettes in nightclubs, driving around, handing out dungs at the beach, riding just different jobs. No ego to it. Do what it takes to put food on the table while you're chasing your dream. Have your big goal in mind once you find it. If you're out there, you haven't found it yet, you know, there's many ways to do it. Go to the community college, like I said in a previous one. Figure out what it is that you love because once you find something you have a passion for and you can't live without, do everything you can to get it, man. Go as hard as possible. No ego in it, man. It doesn't matter. I drove Lyft constantly, bartend. I do all kinds of, uh, uh, of jobs as well to chase my dream, and it's worth it. I'm here to tell you it's worth it. I'm not famous, I'm not rich, but I love what I do, and I hope that you're gonna love what you do when you get out there and do it, man. Let's go, we could do anything. God bless, see you on the next one. You should never stress about the problems you be facing. Everybody in the mud on the struggle trying to make it. Look into the mirror and you see your motivation. Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration. I'm finding inspiration, and once I get a hold of it, I'll never get complacent. Look into the mirror and you see the motivation, then you step into the world and you find your inspiration.